Hello everybody and welcome to the Terraform Homestead. This week we're doing an update video on our mini split DIY air conditioning install and hopefully giving you guys the guidance and some advice on if you want to do this yourself. Since our last video, I have recharged the system once and that was kind of to be expected because we did have that big leak. If you haven't watched that video, you know, I will encourage you to go back and watch that one after this video. That was scary. Of all the builds I do out here, that was one of the uh, scariest moments I've had. But this video is going to give some new insights and hopefully find a better way to do it than that first one did. So we had to recharge the air conditioner once due to the leak from a bad flare fitting. The system worked great for about a month after that and I have noticed it dropping and dropping and dropping and now it is back to not really being a air conditioner anymore. So done some research, a couple of y'all commented on that last video and gave me some good resources to go to to figure this out so we've got a whole new game plan in place to hopefully hopefully make this a diy friendly build i'll be doing an update on the budget and my recommendations at the end of this video so with that let's get into this build here's the game plan so flare fittings are not a gift uh, that i have been given to install. I tried, I tried, I tried. I hate flare fittings. So one of our commenters recommended these ProFit push to connect refrigerant line sort of things. They seem a lot like the uh, shark bite connections seem to get good reviews and it's a thing where you just cut deeper push them together and in theory it should work so we've got two different sets one is a coupling that will go in here to just connect those two lines one has a female threaded end and those will go on the actual unit outside so these are very expensive i will be doing a full cost breakdown in the end but i think buying these instead of all the other tools that were needed probably come out in the wash and this seems like a lot more diy friendly way of doing this so we'll see but first thing we need to do is take the refrigerant out of the unit and fortunately i know how to do that now because of the emergency of last video so we're gonna do that and then get everything disconnected install these pressure test and hopefully have enough refrigerant that I don't have to buy a new thing. Okay, so you can see we're in a very slight vacuum. The process for getting the refrigerant back in the line is basically shut off your low end, your little line, go turn the unit on cold for just like a minute. When it gets to that vacuum, rush inside, shut the unit off, come back, close this one. So in theory, now I can take these lines off there's nothing in these tubes. So the game plan now is to just cut off these initial flares and then replace them with our little push to connect guys because yeah there's definitely a leak somewhere in here and I'm gonna put it up to user error of me not being able to do flares. So we're gonna get these cleaned up. Unfortunately I cannot do that while filming and on a ladder. So, show you guys when it's done. All right, that's how we're looking. Um, those were pretty simple to install. And these were the tough ones because you still gotta get that nut tension down right. Um, yeah, so let's move on to the inside. So I'm very glad I didn't decide, or decide not to cut these lines and leave them long. So now I gotta get some more line inside. The only issue is uh, yeah, spray foam that. So that's gonna be fun to try and push that through. So I got the inside done, the outside done. I'm gonna hook it back up to the pump. Let that run for a little bit. Pressure test hasn't seemed to uh, matter much. <laughs> Probably doing it wrong, but I'm gonna pressure test it just for shits and giggles. And then hopefully I do have enough refrigerant left from that last 
refill. If not, I'm gonna be ordering some more, which stuff's not cheap. So yeah, let's hope there's enough left in that bottle. First pressure test failed. Seems like this end right here is causing the problem. So I'm gonna try and take this off, recut it, and then stick it back in. Kind of giving up on this for now. Still getting, a, I think, a little leak on one of the fittings, but I'm just kind of using soapy water and that's not really like giving me a definitive answer. So next time I go to town, I'm gonna be getting some actual like proper leak detection fluid. Uh, I was doing some research and reading about using nitrogen to pressure test the system instead of the refrigerant. So gonna be doing that. I'm actually gonna be doing CO2. I read that it's CO2 is not as ideal because there's potentially more moisture in there, but that it'll work in a pinch. And I've got CO2 tanks for my welding equipment. I don't have nitrogen tanks. So once I get this little fitting figured out, we're gonna be pressure testing it with CO2 this time instead of going straight to refrigerant and making a huge environmental disaster that is very expensive. That's the plan for now. Good morning, everybody. We're moving right along back on this air conditioning build and it's supposed to get over 100 all this week. It's like 7 a.m. I'm already kind of sweating, so really hopeful that today is the day that this air conditioning finally gets fixed and works properly. I have taken all possible precautions and got proper leak detection fluid. I have our CO2 tank that I'm going to be positive pressure testing the system with. So if it does leak, it's leaking CO2, not refrigerant, which is important because while CO2 is not great for the environment, it is much, much better than the refrigerant leaking out. And I already feel super guilty for having it fail on me twice. So we're gonna hope for the best that these press fit connections actually work like they say they're supposed to work. So hopefully by noon today, when it's supposed to be 104 out, I will have air conditioning and can enjoy myself inside. <laughs> One thing I'm chalking up to being a uh, borderline Moses parting the Red Sea miracle is that this tank has the same size fitting as my vacuum pump. And what I've learned with plumbing is nothing has the same <laughs> tread pattern, size, fittings, anything without $32 worth of adapters. So I'm really happy about this. Okay, so I checked this with the leak detection fluid. What I'm realizing is these pipes going in here have to be, I mean, absolutely, absolutely straight dead on. This last one had just the tiniest little bend in it and it wasn't seating right. So that's why we were having issues there. I also found once these are in to not touch them. So this is really ugly and I don't like it, but I'm just gonna put a painting here or something like that. I don't know to cover it up because I do not want to touch these because they don't hold very well. So um, I've got pressure in the line uh, with the CO2. Don't see any leaks. I'm going to vacuum it out now, kill that CO2 out and then hopefully hold that vacuum for like an hour. And if that's the case, pressure test again, or leak test again, and then maybe we can put refrigerant in the line, hopefully. We get the system vacuumed out that's been running for about half an hour and it's shut off. Now we wait and pray and hope that the pressure holds so I can have air conditioning. Here we go again, hoping there's a little bit left in this. Uh, so I can get it to positive pressure and then let it sit for a little bit. But I did order a second uh, bottle. This it's bigger, just in case. So we're gonna try it out. I don't see any leaks out here or on the inside. We did get up to 50 PSI. We need to get to about 120. So I'm glad I got the other bottle. I'm gonna let this sit for maybe an hour and see if we can kind of hold that 50. So I took a little bit of like a super high grit sandpaper and cleaned off each end of this little line because it was still leaking. I was having problems with just like one connection, but we've got cool air coming out. So I'm gonna let this run for like another hour and see 
if that 50 PSI stays, and if it does, then I'll kind of put the rest of the refrigerant in. Uh, luckily with this little leak, I was able to recapture everything into the system again. That is a extremely, extremely important skill set to know how to do when doing this kind of thing. Cause yeah, that refrigerant one, it's terrible for the environment and I still feel guilty. Um, but two, like it's really expensive. So you don't want to lose it. And yeah, we're gonna let this sit for an hour and cross our fingers cause yeah, we're up to 95 degrees Fahrenheit right now. So it's, it's starting to get hot. All right, so I got the full pressure going in there. We don't seem to have any leaks. I'm gonna let it run for a good while and hopefully stay at that like 120. It's right at 120 right now, which is perfect. Let's hope, cause it's hot and yeah, I really don't want to be doing this again. So with three quarters of a bottle of leak detection fluid uh, used, a lot of fingers crossed, we have been holding pressure for an hour now with the unit running. So we're getting cold air. It's a lot more comfortable out here or in here than out there. All right, so it has been a little bit of time since we did the round two of our air conditioning remodel, whatever you wanna call it, rebuild learning experience, how about that? And I wanted to go through kind of an updated recommendation after our last one didn't work out so well. So this is kind of our cost breakdown and updates to our overall recommendations on what you would do. I definitely liked the push to connect fittings versus trying to do flare fittings. I found they were still very finicky and you know not the easiest thing to work with. If you see on YouTube they're like just stick them together and it's super easy. Yeah they were still pretty finicky and you really really have to get that pipe perfect for them to not leak. While they weren't you know the end all be all solution to everything I do find they were a lot easier than doing flare fittings and if I were to make a recommendation after this whole experience I would honestly start with the push to connect fittings just when you get your mini split cut off the factory fittings because honestly ours leaked to begin with so what's the point anyways so going through kind of a cost breakdown budget from the last system to this system, the DIY solution stayed about the same. What I kind of took away from our last system is on this one, I didn't use the torque wrench. It just seemed to me to cause more problems. I got it snug, but not too tight and didn't see or notice any leaks on the system. So I found the torque wrench wasn't necessary, which meant the crow's feet weren't necessary. Nylog flare kit, the flare seal, not necessary to this new updated system with the push to connect fittings. That knocked off around a hundred bucks uh, worth of tools and things like that, that in theory I would not have had to purchase. With the new system, I, you'd still have to buy a, a pipe cutting set. I will link one below and I would definitely recommend getting something of quality there because that fitting has to be absolutely perfect and that pipe has to be absolutely perfect for it to work properly get something of quality don't do what i did and get the harbor freight version just because it's the cheapest thing because that becomes more expensive in the long run once you have to rebuy refrigerant the other thing we obviously had to purchase was those push to connect fittings those were not cheap so those four fittings cost us around 75 dollars but Again, for the ease of use, it kind of works itself out, and I still would have rather gone with the push to connect to begin with, rather than trying to fight with the flare fittings and having to rebuy refrigerant. The other thing I bought that was very helpful was a quality leak detection fluid. So I will leave a link to that below. It does micro bubbles. And so it's so hard with just soapy water to really be able to tell if there's the tiniest little pinprick of a leak and that will drain your refrigerant over time. That's what happened last time was I thought I had everything nice and sealed and perfect and our system lasted a month, uh, but there was just that tiniest bit of a leak and 
that's what kind of cost me uh, purchasing new refrigerant. So kind of going down cost breakdowns of these new systems. Let's see what we got. So the original system uh, with the Della air conditioner and everything came out to be $1,008. Once I removed some of the tools that I did not need with the push to connect systems, the total for the new, what I would recommend push to connect system if you decide to DIY this came out to be $1,014. So really not a big difference in cost between the flare setup and the push to connect setup, but the push to connect setup was exponentially easier to work with and the only way I've got it to be successful. <laughs> so take that for what it is. Comparing that to the original professional install, which was at $1,381, we're still saving a little bit of money. And compared to the Mr. Cool DIY system that claims to be a DIY system out of the box, that one ended up being $1,819. So still a significant, significant savings over that. My total, so after the screw ups and having to repurchase refrigerant twice, I ended up coming in at $1,200 and $90. So it was $286 worth of extra refrigerant that I had to purchase. I did buy a five pound uh, bottle this time instead of the two pound bottle. Our unit takes about two pounds. So I still have like a whole nother opportunity for this to screw up, honestly, before I would have to purchase extra refrigerant. Uh, the reason I did that was because the two pound bottle is about 110 bucks. The five pound bottle was like 180 bucks. So I figured still not super confident in my abilities and I might as well just pay the little bit extra instead of gambling that I'm going to get it 100% right this time. Luckily, it seems to be working out time will tell but yeah very optimistic about where things are at with that thank you guys for watching if you're enjoying this type of series of is it actually DIYable please let me know because I'd love to do more stuff like this I find that YouTube gives you the highlights of everything and nobody admits when they screw up and shows you actually how difficult some of these things are to DIY so I'd love to do more series like this if you guys find it valuable Thank you guys for watching and go build something cool.